and like, oh, real scary, buddy. Doing all this kind I of know, theatrics. I know, like, I know. Stop. It's rude. First of right. all, it's rude. Why are right. you here? And second of all, kick rocks. Kick every rock east of the Mississippi. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am your host, Spencer Cartier with an I- I-E-R. I am Captain Noah with the N-O-A-H. Who's Captain? Is that have to do with Noah's Noah's Ark? No. Noah. <laughs> And this here is Frank wearing a, what would you call that? A neck scarf? He's giving me um, Freddy from Scooby-Doo vibes. Yeah, I can see that. I think it has to Oh. I think it has to be sideways for Freddy, and he's doing the center. Okay. A neckerchief? Bolt. I don't know what it's called. Neckerchief sounds about right. How's it going, guys? What's up, guys? How's it going? How have you been since yesterday? Second day back in the studio, back in Pennsylvania? How do you feel? <laughs> Uh, you know the little boy who cries when the news lady interviews him for school uh, are you gonna miss your mom and he's like no <laughs> I'm no uh. Andrew, are you excited for pre-kindergarten yes why i don't know are you gonna miss your mom no no <laughs> <laughs> oh don't cry are you <laughs> yeah cute little boy um, Captain Noah, send your pictures to dear old Captain Noah. Send today, send right away. It, it, it was a children's show, and he was the host. And um, I don't know if it was local. There was also Captain Kangaroo, which he might have been bigger than Captain Noah. But Captain uh, Noah, little rivalry, friendly rivalry. I don't know Noah because I was too Kangaroo? little to know. Okay, I might have been watching reruns for all I know, but um. That part, send your pictures to dear old Captain Noah. So you you would send in your dumb little kid drawings. Yeah. And then the, the, the camera would pan oh, over it. All the, the ugly photos. Fame uh, drawings. Yeah, you're on TV. <laughs> your, your picture, at least. Um, it was I'm, I'm like a Mr. Rogers type. Mr. Rogers wasn't the only... PBS special. Right. There gotcha. was... This was before Cartoon Network. This was before Nickelodeon. This was before... Sesame Street. Um, well, Sesame Street is 1970. It's probably not before Sesame Street, but but um, there were children's shows before Sesame Street. Romper Room. There was like a lady who used to talk to the kids. So just think of like a Barney situation, but they were humans. Oh, human Barney. Like a real life dinosaur. Huh. Yeah, because they were old. But I loved Captain Noah. Okay. And that was, um, yeah. So that's who I was. Well, that is fun. I am just boring old Spencer again. Maybe I want to be someone different someday. You can always be someone different. Um, Just not today. Today I'm going to be Spencer. Yeah. What is it to you? What's hoodie it season. You? It's hoodie season, isn't it? It's hoodie season every season spooky for me. Spooky season. It's the seventh day of spooky season. For me. Have you watched any scary movies? No. Do you have a favorite Halloween movie? No. I like... Huh. I'm, I'm not into thematic... Uh, I don't feel. You don't like to be told what. what I don't. Mood. I don't like to be told. I don't like to feel that it's time to watch uh, a Christmas show or. A, um... I do. I like being told what to do. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say I like Nightmare on Nightmare Before Christmas because it's both a Halloween movie and a Christmas movie, mm-hmm. and I'm not a huge Halloween person. I do enjoy Halloween, mm-hmm. but. I like that because you get your Halloween, Jack Skellington mm-hmm. and the gang. But it's also, you know, you get Santa Claus too. Some people would say it's not even a Halloween movie. Um, I find it's early for all the Halloween stuff, but I understand. <laughs> what is what is on time? Uh, I, I, it, it, it should be like a, a week or two before, but starting October 1st. I, I do think lot. Halloween got a little out of hand. Yes. Like... I, I I think there was one spooky season that came out of nowhere. I yes. I don't even know where I first heard that, but mm-hmm. it wasn't something I always knew. No, it was Christmas season, like the like Christmas the holiday was the, season. They tried to stretch the Christmas, all of December, Black Friday, and then yeah. before Black yeah. Friday. Right. Yeah. As soon as Thanksgiving ends, right, it is the holiday. Yeah, it's the holiday season. But Halloween, like you don't get a day off of school or or nothing. No, and it, it was always like, yeah, October twentieth. Put out your pumpkin. Yeah. But as this now, late September, early October, it's I f- time. I, f- I find it's ru- I find it's rushing it and it's 
pushing it. And you know, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's a fad. Halloween became a fad, didn't it? Like how? how- oh, definitely. It, it was it was like very low key. Then yeah. there were like aficionados who were yeah. like, "Oh, uh, I'm a Halloween I'm have person." A Halloween wedding. Yeah, that's my favorite. Like, no yeah. one would pick it. Used to pick it as their favorite, and then it's like everyone. Now it's everyone's. It's everyone's it's, favorite. Remember, pizza was really big. Yeah, where's the pizza? Oh yeah, we and, get there, and I'm like, "Where's the pizza?" And tacos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that. It's, let me um, get a, let me get a Forever Twenty One shirt. That says even cats. Season. I told you before, cats used to be um the least. Yeah, you throw them at the wall. See if they stuck, or is that pasta? It's probably pasta. Oh, um, to see if they're done, <laughs> <laughs> they would be done. I love cats; they're my favorite pet. But then they got so don't um, cancel me. They got so popular because it used to be, you know, it, you, it's like okay, so it used to be an insult like you're a cat lady yeah. or a cat person, and then people like embraced it, and yeah. then people, you know, just like I'm a nerd, you yeah, know, and I'm it's a like nerd. You're, you know, <laughs> you're not really, yeah. So, um. Same thing with Halloween. And um, this comes from somebody who likes Halloween. Someone who, who liked um, Dias de, la, de, Dias los, de los, Muertos los Muertos before other Americans. I'm not going to say before the Mexicans because that's crazy. <laughs> but, um, you know, before you could see it absolutely everywhere. And so I'm not even I'm not even mad about it, but I do recognize it. Yeah. And that's the first step is recognizing it. <laughs> no, yeah, I do love Halloween. This isn't the Halloween bashing podcast. Huh. The only thing we're bashing here is pumpkins. Or is it Smashing Smash Pumpkins? It. Oh, Isn't well. that band? It is. <coughs> Only because it was, I think, a name. I think the name came first, and then the band picked the name. Hmm. Yeah. What do you mean the name came first? Smashing Pumpkins was like an, a known thing. Well, yeah, you like go... Bobbing for Apples, and then you named your band Bobbing for Apples. Yeah, but like it wasn't like a. a it's like a thing people did with Smash Pumpkins, right? You'd go walk in the neighborhood and see a pumpkin, right? A jack o' lantern that a little child spent a long time making. And you'd kick it with your boot to impress your your fellow your fellow friends. For why I say for why. But there was also not pump not like what you're talking about. Just um, just what's this called vandalism and <laughs> <laughs> hatred. There was no like <laughs> pumpkin. They would throw them or maybe they catapult them. I think oh, they still do that. Yeah, pumpkin yeah. catapulting. Yeah, there was a whole show yeah. on like the Discovery Channel. Right. But more than a show, they made the show because. Apparently somewhere in Wyoming. People do it. They were all building the best catapults. Right. Ah, I think I'm going to watch that tonight. Um, You like carving pumpkins? You like pumpkins? Eating? I'm talking like spooky season, like the theatrics around it. Like, do you enjoy going to the old pumpkin patch? Do you enjoy going on the hayride? I hay like ride? the idea more than the reality. So, hey, fun, pumpkin hey. patch. <laughs> hey, fun, hay ride. Um, and the reality is, I'm going to be so negative. <laughs> the reality is it's super expensive. The reality is it's usually super cold where we live. The reality is you're getting poked in the butt with, with the hay. <laughs> Ain't that the worst. Um, the reality is pumpkin carving. Some people are fantastic at it. Yeah. I'm not. No. So it's a lot of dangerous even, yeah, stabbing a, yeah. without any result. <laughs> I'm not good either. I'm an art major, but I'm still not good. Uh, and the worst part about it, remember, I think I said in one of the Florida podcasts, mm-hmm. I said, I feel like I'm always in this in between of I'm not too this, right. I'm not too that. Right. I'm not Gen Z, I'm not millennial. I'm not too good, but I'm not too bad. Like sometimes a really bad carved pumpkin is good. Right. It's like, it almost looks cliche. Oh, yeah. But I'm just like, I know. It's better than a bad pumpkin, but it's never going to be a great pumpkin. Right. So it looks just like a good job. I'll get, I'll get a pat on the back for my pumpkin. Yeah. I won't. I won't lose a contest, and I won't win a contest. Right. But it's like, okay, that's fun. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about haunted houses? I don't like them. What do you like? <laughs> Let's start there. I'm known for not liking a lot of things. I don't. No, I don't like. I don't. I like social gatherings. Yeah. I and if my friends are like, we're going to a haunted yeah, house. Yeah, I like events we're, we're going, and I like holidays. We're, we're going and, to the yeah. Eastern State Penitentiary. I say I'm in. Right. Uh, Sign me up. Right. Where do I sign? You don't have uh, to sign usually. <laughs> sign your life away. And I go. Just show up. And even the last time I went, I said they were giving out the bands like if you want it to be extra spooky. Yo, really? We'll touch ya. No, really? We'll, we'll tickle ya. I didn't know if, that. If they tickled me, I would well, freak out. Well, that would be. And I was like, okay, get, I don't. And this isn't me being macho. This isn't me, be, mm. me being a tough guy. I don't get 
afraid of that. I get afraid of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I'll get afraid of a social interact. I'll get afraid of of making a doctor's appointment before I and I'll admit that. But being in a haunted house, which is like it's so theatrical. Yeah, I know. And but my biggest thing is which all makes me cringe. This is you ever watch Family Guy and uh, Peter Griffin? He used to like complain about things, and so. They were like, oh, you're good. You should be on a show. And then he had like a show on the news and it was like, you know what grinds my gears? Uh, it's no. called Grinds My Gear. And he no. was just, yeah. You know what grinds my gears? I like seeing people that are go and they're getting frayed. Ooh. Yeah. Ah. Yee. That's fun. You're enjoying yourself. I'll never take that away from you. I don't love roller coasters. I When I see people scream, you have a fun time. Yeah. What I don't like, because because I am someone who does not get scared from a... Very safe. Very. I probably went to high school with the person who's working there. Yeah. I know that you literally legally can't touch me. Mm-hmm. I am more scared being, you know, at a rest stop at three in the morning. Well, yeah. Than I am at a Eastern State Penitentiary. No incidents in the past. To 20 the people years. who don't know Eastern State Penitentiary. Oh, Eastern State Penitentiary. It's a old uh prison. Yeah. Prison in uh, Philadelphia that was you know all it was t- it's. Well, I feel like actually, if you want to be afraid of any, you should be afraid of that. I used to say I'd like to go there without it being I, I, haunted. I think I'd be more afraid in the off season. Right. But in the on season being spooky season, they turn it into a haunted um, house. So, and you walk Decorations around. Decorations and the they, actors ah. and the music. So, yeah. So what grinds my gears. Fog machines. What Peter Griffin grinds my gears is when guys, and you know what I'm going to say it. I think is when they are afraid. And I say guys, but it can be guys or girls who to show how not scared they are, they're like they laugh in the face of, of oh, yeah. the poor person making seven dollars to yeah. put up on makeup and scream at you. Right. And they're like, Oh, real scary, buddy. Doing all this kind I of know, theatrics. I know, like, I know. Stop. It's rude. First of right. all, it's rude. Why right. are you here? And second of all, kick rocks. Kick every rock east of the Mississippi. Now it goes back to why I don't really love haunted hayrides. Mm-hmm. I'm an empath. I'm cursed with it. <laughs> I'm just too empathetic for my own good. But not scared of haunted houses naturally. I'll never be someone who pretend or I'll never be someone who show expresses my lack of fear. So I should be getting paid as one of the actors because yeah. the entire time I'm walking around, I'm like, oh, woo, oh, uh, zippity zoop. And you, you get, got me. You get drained. You jumped out of the. The, the door? I didn't. Drained. I had no idea someone was going to jump out of the door. And so the entire time, I'm playing up this like yeah. I, I'm I'm literally trying to make it fun for the for the actors. Right. Like, oh, you, you got me. I got that guy. But um, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That that group was. So I'm guessing you don't sit in the front seat. Front seat. <laughs> I'm guessing you don't sit in the front row of like show like comedians or singers or anything because I know when I've sat in front, not front row, but like front rows, I feel very like. I feel he's on stage, yeah. but I feel that I need to really act like I'm enjoying myself because yeah. he might get his feelings hurt. Yeah, <laughs> and, and so and so all it's um it's mentally draining for yeah. me at the old uh, the old haunted haunted house. And and you're right, some you know you might have gone to high school with the person and they're just trying to make off season money, but they a lot of them are actors. If you go to good ones, good productions, yeah, they are actors. Actors who 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 are actors, student actors, or yeah, just people who are trying like to be actors. You went to school for theater. And they then... do they do um, take these jobs at, yeah. at um. There's a there's a museum of Bible. I think it's called not the Bible Museum Museum of Bible. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> In Washington D.C., <clears throat> we were going to go, but it didn't work out. Um, and they have people dressed up as Bible characters. Who, oh, really? Yeah, oh, I'd like to work there. Who are just explaining what their little what their little exhibit piece is. I am just a farmer. Right. Who's farming? What an accent for the Bible. But Yeah. <laughs> but you might think, you know, and, and there could be people in What there. would a Bible accent sound like, first of all? Like, I would find it to be like, I am Ruth. I have prayed for the people to be okay. Like, I, th- I would okay. think like that. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they'd hire me. I don't know. <laughs> I've <laughs> been practicing that in the mirror. <laughs> but, um... So same thing to you. You're just like, oh, it's a museum. And it's just like anybody taking you through the Franklin Institute. But to them, they are doing a performance. Yeah. And, and they're um, so same thing with the thing. But I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, 
I don't like. I really just don't like the the line standing and the yeah. Type well, of- also, I, I do like the. I, I would be lying if I said I didn't like the environment. Okay. I like the chill in the air. Okay. You know. Yeah. I don't. I don't like cider, but you know, someone will order a cider. So you like the whole in, thing. Okay. I, I I like to get in two moods. Yeah. Unnaturally. Yeah. So it, it, if it puts, you know. Oh, I am enjoying a moment, yeah. Kodak moment, as the kids say. Right. Um, I like, so I, I do go. I'm not. I'm not a uh, Scrooge. I'm not a Scrooge. I'm not. You know, I think it was like the. You know, it's funny. I'm never gonna find it, but it's somewhere. The first, you know, how I always add animations or add like little yeah. images. Show my images. Um. The first time I ever added one, because I know I did it, because I did it completely wrong. It took yeah. me like an hour. And we didn't plan how the show would no. have been edited. I put a Photoshop Scrooge over you okay. because you were being a Scrooge. Okay. So oh. since the beginning, it's been. It, oh, it's, I, I, I'm sure. I, I'm sure anybody who knows me would. It's not far to say that Verona can be that way. But uh, yeah, it's been a year. Your podcast. I feel like I keep having to sneeze. Is it the devil? Oh. Oh. Uh, every time you sneeze, it's because the devil's in you. No, what? And the angels are fighting to get him out. God bless you. That's what is it that, is. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. I don't know. I just made that up. Ooh. People, you know what that is? What? Hay fever. What is hay fever? Hay fever, even though it's called hay fever, is usually like ragweed or something, which is when the flowers start blooming in the spring. Oh. But people do get full allergies as well and maybe you have that why you're reacting right this second i don't know the devil i'm telling you because you know why he's like yeah keep talking about spooky season don't talk about what's important and what is important that it's walk through thursday day day roll the intro please Mm -hmm. welcome back hope you're having fun because walk through wednesday just begun What's up, everybody? It is Walk Through Thursday, the greatest time of the year. You always say year. Why not? Oh, so like every all those Thursdays? Yeah. The 52 Thursdays? Yeah, sure. But this one in particular is the best day of the year because it's Walk Through Thursday. <laughs> and what we do on Walk Through Thursday is... Take it away, Crow. We open up the Bible. We open up the Bible and we pick a verse or a poem or a psalm or a song or a... Uh, Something that was written. A haiku. <laughs> and we break it down. Mm-hmm. Like, just like I'm going to break... Stop it. His, his eye's already missing. We break it down and we slow probably, it down. Look how loud that was. I'm sorry. So many times we, we read Bible verses as mantras and we fly through them. Ah, I know this Bible verse by heart. You want to hear how fast I can say say it? You want to hear how loud I can scream? Right. Um, but not all the time do we slow it down and give one small verse the chance to shine. Right. Shine through the words. It reminds me of like, so everyone knows the saying, um, stop and smell the roses. Stop and smell the roses. So you're just always walking on this path and the path gets you from one place to the next and you might always be on it and you, and you're just focused on the destination and stop and smell the roses. Uh, that must have must have been very modern day that it became popular but someone said it and everyone loved it and it's like yeah like stop yes you're going there but look there's roses have you ever even stopped to smell them yeah so it's that but it's in we're we're stopping we're stopping to smell the bible verses so we yeah we break it down sentence by sentence line by line word by word letter by letter right and without further ado okay um let's get into it okay sure why not um Let's go to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. And if you guys don't know what Titus is, that is in the book of Paul. The book, one of the books Paul wrote, right? The I, letters to Titus. Oh, is it? Is it letters to um I don't know. <clears throat> or did, is Titus one of his boys? Is Titus one of his boys? I know. Um, I well, know it, I'm sure I looked it up before because it's not something you hear a lot. People don't, people don't quote no, people, Titus. Nobody says my favorite book of the Bible is Titus, but you know, maybe... Maybe we all should look at Titus a little more. Let's see. The Epistle of Paul to Titus. Boom. Um, Not saying I read the Bible or anything, but I read the entire Bible. And it Take is... Take that to the yeah, spiritual it's, bank. It's it's that. So um, if I had known that, maybe I wouldn't have picked it. <laughs> I'm trying to pick Old Testament stuff, but I keep ending up over with Paul. 
Maybe Jesus wants you right where you're at in this moment that we are in. You're right correct. Now. You're correct. So um, let's go to, what did I say? Chapter three, Titus three, nine, um, nine and 10. Titus three, nine and 10. You heard it here first. It's going to be good. Okay. Titus. I'm going to name my dog Titus. Ooh, that sounds like a Rottweiler. Yeah. Or a Doberman. Titus, yeah. I, I seem like it seems a little bigger to me. Yeah, it's a little more sturdy. Titus yeah. is a sturdy name. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Titus, 9 and 10. Hem, Frank. But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law, because these are unprofitable and useless. Warn a divisive person once, and then warn them a second time. After that, have nothing to do with them. You may be sure that such people are warped and sinful. They are self-condemned. Oh my, a lot of condemnation from Paul. But... Paul. I think he's just... He's not so much condemning... He's not. ...the people. He's telling Titus, I guess. He's actually not condemning. Right. And we're going to get to that, but that's at the very end. Okay. So stick around. (laughs) After these messages. Okay. So let's just walk through it. Okay. But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law. Now, well, first of all, what is the law? The law is um, love your neighbor as just well, love your neighbor. The law is the Bible. Oh, right. Right. But I mean, it's it's Paul. So it's going to be. But this is Titus. This is, so the, all the Bible happened. It's the entire Bible. All the books Paul wrote. Right. And then uh, Revelation. So all the Bible, like the, it's all the Bible, the Bible for all all times that we. were But I mean, um, if you say all of God's if it, messages, but if you say it's all the law, then you're going to go back and say don't mix fabrics and don't eat pork. So I'm saying, yeah, no, that's what we're saying. Oh, we are saying, we are that. saying that. Oh, okay. We are saying that. Okay. You know why we're saying that? Why? Because what is he saying about it? He's saying I don't remember. Avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law. Oh. So, so take all of that and what you just said. Oh, but then we're talking about mixing fabrics. Avoid all that. Okay. That's not what it's about. And, gotcha. And that's what, that's what, so that's what, why you need to be told. That's what we say and that's what they say. It, okay. It, what is the point of me me going on, on Christian Reddit and arguing back and forth of, well, actually, well, the Bible, well, if you look in Leviticus 2.17, it'll say clearly it's not what's important. We, okay. we all know what's important. Like God reiterates in the Bible, so many times what's important, you know, about love and, and all that. So he's right. saying avoid all of this. And genial. So what was it? Avoid what? <clears throat> con- con- foolish con- controversies. Controversies. Genealogies. Genealogies, which is? Um, you know, whose par- who's mom, David, and Jesus. The, the, fa- the, the bloodlines, the tribes, the who belongs to who. Yes. Uh, and They're all um, symbolic. Don't get us wrong. Right. And they shouldn't be like. You shouldn't fight thro- over throw it. Throw it all away. But right. you shouldn't fight over it. Okay. Um, arguments and quarrels about the law. So arguments back and, and forth. Of, should I do this? Should I do that? Well, not should I, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the, uh, it, 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 and I think the big word is foolish. Like, okay. it's good to have discussions. It's good right. to learn more about the Bible, but there is a point when you're arguing about, you know, something that literally is you're overlooking what's really right. being told in the right. Bible. Because these are unprofitable and useless. Unprofitable, you get nothing from it, right? Right. That's what when when you make a profit, you get something. Right. It's unprofitable. You know why? Why aren't you arguing? It's because you're not getting anything from it. And it's useless. Which it's is useless. interesting. It's because, without use. Because by the way, a lot of times you feel that the useful usefulness of it is you are protecting God's yeah. word, and you are further like. You know what I'm saying? Like when people want to quarrel with you about the law or the word or what they perceive of it, yeah. they think it's very useful. They think that they're doing God's work. <clears throat> yeah. And maybe they're not wrong, but that's what comes the next part. Okay. Right. Warn a divisive person once. What does a divisive person mean? I'm guessing someone who divides. Someone who's unsure, I would say. You know, yeah. like well, divisive isn't divisive. Like stop being divisive is like stop trying to. You're you're being divisive. You're you're trying to break it down, aren't you? You're trying to divide it. Yeah, that's what. Or I don't mean break it down in a good way. I mean 
you're trying to catch me in my, you know how, um, because why would you warn someone who was just confused? Not confused, like uh, looking like. Derisive. I'm th- I think I'm thinking of the word der- derisive with an R. Okay, well now I got to figure it out because we can't be telling these people the wrong thing. Oh, wait, did I just lose it? No. Um, And this is how you can read a Bible. You can talk to somebody about it. You can you can look up words you don't know on very easily on your phone. Easily. Uh, I so recommend don't be afraid to read the Bible and don't feel you have to have someone else read the Bible for you. Divisive, tending to cause disagreement or hostility between people. So you're being divisive. So, so someone who is arguing, you're ar- you're arguing with somebody. You're arguing. I know. You're not Bible. really asking me because. Yeah, I know the Bible. You know the Bible, and it's so you're talking. Obviously, if someone agrees with you, you won't be right. This won't apply. So warn a divisive person once. Right. So you're having this argument about the word. Right. Warn them like, hey, listen, this is what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying even and so even if you know what this is good, whether you believe obviously mostly everyone believes what they think is correct but this is also good for others right who disagree with you and warn them a second time after that have nothing to do with them i i I feel like this is such an important thing like i said for both what we say which, which is let those who have ears hear right and what we mean by that is god's message when you are expressing it people that are ready to hear it they will hear it right and people that aren't ready to hear it aren't ready to hear it and so don't waste your time you told them once you told them twice don't be on school campuses telling them again and again right. and again following and, them and yeah. put, putting papers in their hands exactly and, and so like i said it's good for us you know where it's like we and then it's also for the people that are we, you're, we're arguing with it's like you've you've said to me what you you right believe right and it says in the Bible, like, don't just keep, because that goes back to that quarreling back and forth. Right. You may be sure that such people are warped and sinful. They are self-condemned. Now, here's what I think about this. Okay. So, obviously, you know, Paul is teaching people about the Bible. So, he's teaching exactly how it, it's meant to be taught or whatever. Right, right. Um, so... What I think, though, is let those who have ears here, whoever doesn't, they've made their decision. Right. And so back to when in the very beginning. Now we're at the condemn part. Welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully you can just fast forward here. Hopefully you watched all that. Um, with the condemnation, I think this is this is an important line because we're like, oh, there goes there he goes condemning people. He's not. He's saying he's saying these words. But what do these words really mean on walk through Thursday? These people are, I would even just skip past, are warped and sinful. Let's skip past that for right now. Okay. They are self-condemned. Okay. Huh. So you're saying they're not, you're not the ones condemning them. Right. Don't condemn, like, it, it, this it is in a way, it's like, don't judge. Like, right. They are living their life. They're living their truth. And that is the, the that is, they're doing, they're on a life path to, on their own. Nobody's right. pushing them. Right. You're not pulling them. And it's, there is no, they will be condemned. It's right. no. self, they, they, right. they're making their own choices. Right. <coughs> the devil. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and how, how great would it be if both sides both subscribed to that statement? So if if um someone's trying to come to me and tell me what I'm saying is wrong, yeah, um and I'm and I'm refusing to go along with them because I just it's not my reality, yeah. So this is their reality. This is my reality. And you know if we both tried to make them see our side twice, yeah, and neither one it's a stalemate. So it's not even like we're we we are saying they're bad and they're dumb and they're condemned. yeah. Let let these people feel that I'm. Self condemned, yes, exactly. and I'm, and I can feel that they're going to have to lay in the bed that they yeah. made and walk away with that. Yeah, it's literally in a way, it's it's a, a agree to disagree, and my, and, and worry about and, yourself. Yeah, literally, like like I'm, I'm. That's the thing about don't push your views on other people. Right. Everyone believe this. Right. Like, like everyone believe that that you know you tell them once, tell them a second time, and then they're on their own. Right. They're, they're you know how how much better the the world would be. Right. If 
religious extremists, instead of walking around with their God's, right. God hates this and God hates that and condemning people on their own because it's their right. Right. If you just tell them once, tell them twice and then have nothing to do with right. them because they're self-condemned. Right. And it's like, well, listen, you, 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 you made your bed and now you're going to lay in it. Right. I would love if, if a lot of people that don't have my view would see me as that. Right. It's like, and, and not saying who's right and who's wrong. Right. But anyone who's following the Bible should follow this. Yeah. Because you hear people say, well, I have to keep yes. protesting and I have because to. Because I love them. I, I have to keep sending them letters. Right. And 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 because what they're doing is so sinful yes. and warped. In this um, In this statement, it says, okay, they're sinful and warped. So it it, it, it's, yeah. it it takes away you being able to use that as an excuse. Exactly. If they didn't say that, they would be like, oh, well, that's for something less. But this is so warped and sinful, I have to stop them. Yeah. No, this is saying, okay, they're sinful and warped. Let them be you self-condemned. Told them once, you told them twice. You need to, you need to get away. You told them the oven's hot. Now let them, now, now let them burn their finger. You need to get away. Self-burn. That's it for Walkthrough Thursday. Nothing else. I have nothing else to add. Mm. I think we really killed it this week. We did. Um, until next week. Well, no, until tomorrow. <laughs> until tomorrow, go check out um, our Instagram page. Instagram page. Croak and Crow. Croak and Crow. And, and, and uh, my own personal page, Spencer Cardier. Boost the likes. Drop subscribe. Drop some prayer hands in the in the uh, in the old chat, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace, love. Go and be good people. Go. What are you still doing here? <laughs>